The height of contour is the widest part of the tooth. You can see in this example that we've marked it with a pencil line. And you can see with this silicone matrix that it touches the tooth right where the height of contour is on both the buccal and on the lingual. Anything above that line is called a superbulge area. And any component of a prosthesis can be made to contact that tooth above that line without a problem. Below the line, below the height of contour, the widest part of the tooth, is an area that's actually narrower than the widest part. That area below the line is referred to as the infrabulge area. Only flexible components are able to fit below the widest part, the height of contour, into the undercut or infrabulge area. You can see this demonstrated here. Our matrix is just in the superbulge area. If we put that down just lightly on the tooth, it fits the place very easily. Here's a different case where we've made the matrix so that it fits below the height of contour. And it goes into the part of the tooth that's narrower than the height of contour. And you can see that without us pushing on the matrix, it can't get over or past that widest part of the tooth, the height of contour. We actually have to physically push that down in order for it to seat. This is really important for prostheses such as a crown or a partial denture that have components that fit below the height of contour or into the undercut. They have to be flexible. A crown isn't flexible, so you can't have an undercut when you make a crown. For a partial denture, the only part that's flexible is the retentive arm, and only the terminal third or the tip of the clasp is actually flexible. So anything else on the RPD, if it is rigid, has to be above the height of contour. If you take a vertical object, like this analyzing rod, and you place it against the tooth, it will only touch the tooth in the widest area. It will not go into the undercut. It can only get as close to the widest portion of the tooth. That's the height of contour. But the height of contour is a little bit more complicated than that. It depends on the tilt of the tooth. So here you see one case where the cast is relatively horizontal and you can see the line that makes up the height of contour. If we take that cast and we tilt it, it's the same tooth. But you can see that the line that we see is quite a bit different. Um, and the height of contour moves up higher on the buccal surface because of that tilt. So where the height of contour is actually drawn and where that widest part of the tooth is, depends on the tilt. That tilt we refer to as the path of insertion. And every prosthesis, a crown or a removable partial denture, has a path of insertion. Here's a die made of a crown preparation. It's made so that there are no undercuts at all. And if we take a matrix that fits that, we can seat that down very easily, as long as it goes along the proper path of insertion. Here you can see if we try and come at a different angle, it doesn't actually fit onto the tooth, even though there's no undercuts if we come straight down. But the path of insertion won't allow us to actually insert. So when we design a removable partial denture, we design it with a single path of insertion. That means it will only go into place in one direction, and it will only come out of place in one direction. It makes it easy for us to equalize retention on the different abutment teeth. It minimizes the torque on the different abutment teeth. It allows removal of the prostheses without encountering any interferences or putting rigid elements into undercuts. It directs forces along the long axis of the teeth and it allows us to prepare some guide planes, some flat surfaces on the teeth um, so that we have a path of insertion that allows us to get some frictional retention and help resist the displacement of the partial denture from the arch.